Good morning. Uh, today I actually wanted to do a um, a spiritual awakening story video, just basically explaining my life story, because um, this person, Mr. Scorpion, responded to me and said, "Yeah, I've had some experiences, and I learned how to trust my intuition, and I could tell you about my spiritual awakening story, but I want to go more in detail. But I'll save that for a video." It continues on with the response, um, and Mr. Scorpion, he's actually super cool, by the way, and. Um, yeah, he inspired me to want to make this video. So, I'm going to go ahead and try to explain my life story. Um, and I'll have to pause and kind of think. I might actually like split it up into years. Um, let's see. I was born in Portland. And kind of from the get-go, my parents knew there was something weird about me. They always just called me smart, which just kind of made me more annoyed, because I didn't like the word smart. Um, yeah, the word smart can still be a very negative thing. <laughs> but yeah, basically, um, around like two or three, they noticed weird things about me, like being able to lock them out of the house, <laughs> or being able to push chairs and get up on them and get them a milk bottle from the fridge and like put it in the microwave. And, you know, when I was first doing that, they would have to hold me up and, like, I would press the wrong buttons. They'd be like, oh, no. they'd try to press in. Then I'd be like, no, like, let me do it. Let me do it. And they would, like, just have to sit there until I eventually did it. <laughs> Even though I, like, didn't, I can't read. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just, like, until I, like, eventually I guess I observed hard enough and saw which buttons they pressed and did it. And so around four or five, um where I was being able to like do more speech I started asking more questions I would ask like really strange weird questions or like they would drive somewhere um, to go to a place and then um, they would say oh we're going to that place later on in my life and then like on our way there they would make a stop and I'd be like angry and be like I thought we were going to that place They're like oh well we're stopping by the grocery store and it would make me really really upset because it's like it felt wrong because I'm like well, that's not what I knew. You you told me this is what was going to be the case. Like, I like from the get-go, I already had, I guess, somehow trust issues. <laughs> but um, I wouldn't describe those as trust issues. I just, I don't know, it was weird observations. And um, growing up, maybe around like five or six is when I have my, mem my most recent memory of this. But uh, I was at my grandma's house, my Benoit's house, and um, I had like my bear stuffed animal. I think his name was Barry or Brownie. <laughs> and um I would uh either like I was tapping on their table, like one of the tables there during this party where everyone's doing their own stuff and I would hear numbers every time I tapped and I was like, can other people hear these numbers? But uh yeah, and I could hear them as fast as I would tap too. Which wasn't too fast, but like I f find that I could still probably do it. But yeah, I always found that I could like hear like numbers through anything, through the wind, through sounds, through ch wind chimes, through my tapping, through other noises, or like if there's just a ticking coming from a fridge or anything. I just heard numbers from everything. Um, I don't know if you can hear that like noise coming from my computer, but I could like even like a long drone of a t pitch, I could turn into numbers. So yeah. Um, music be was obviously heavily associated with me when I was very little. One of my earliest memories was with my aunt, who taught me how to play chopsticks. And I think I was like seven, maybe? Um, six? Yeah, and so it's around seven that um, we end up going from Portland and moving to here, Beaverton. And we move here, and we learn we have to adjust. We grew up knowing we can't go outside our house because a lot of bad things happened outside our house. We could get kidnapped outside our house in the neighborhood we were growing up in Portland. But in Beaverton, we were in this suburban area with like lots of rich white people, basically. Or, or so, that's how we perceived them, which um, more or less is kind of the case, but like, there's like some diversity, so that's cool. Anyways, yeah, so like, learning that it was safe to go outside, like, I did not believe it. I was too shy. Um, so I stayed indoors until my brother and like a few of my other siblings built up their own courage pretty quickly to go outside and I would start to follow them. And that's when I met um, my neighbors, <clears throat> Mariella, Michael, and Charles, 
They're across the street neighbors, basically. We call them also the Gonzaleses. And they're obviously super cool. They're family. I love them. Um, yeah, they're just like basically my other brothers and sister or cousins or whatever you want to call them. They're family. And um, yeah, that was around this time, seven or eight. And growing up was a lot of, um, even though these people were in my life, all of these people were kind of afraid of me because I was really difficult to deal with. I would look like I'm starting trouble all the time. Like I would bully people. I'd be really mean. And um, one of the memories that my mom has is like me and this neighbor slash best friend, Matthias, who I hella bullied. I actually ended up killing his hamster on accident. Um, I picked up the hamster and put him down. And by picking him up, my grip was strong enough to kill him. Either that or I gave him a panic attack and he had a heart attack and died or something. But anyways, that wasn't a bullying tactic at all. But like we did end up like in a room together with like my brother and a bunch of people around us going, fight, 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 fight. And I was like, I don't want to fight you. And he was like, ah. And then we get into a fight and I'm like, here we go. And so like lots of things like that. But oh, I'm getting way ahead of myself. The only point of this is that before all that, when I first met him, when I first moved here, when I was like seven, turning eight, we were in a car ride together with my mom. And he said, son, why are you always so mean to me? And I said something like, I just want to see how how mean I can be to you and you'll still be my friend or something like that. So from the like start of things, I was always testing things out or like seeing multiple outcomes or seeing like the inevitable, which is like people definitely won't want to be my friend one day. Like I just know it. I know every friendship has an expiration date or that they're all fake and that I know that they all like not even secretly because it's so I can see it like they're not even hiding it but like I know all these people don't want to be around me basically sort of deal like the Gonzaleses, my siblings everyone pretty much hated me I was like that guy in the neighborhood like all the kids knew me as that one person they're like oh god so like they would form clubs around me like basically like clubs without sun club like basically um yeah, and so that was growing up, and then around middle school, um, my past finally caught up to me. There was a lot of people I had bullied, and I was paired up with one of them for, like, orientation of sixth grade in middle school, and, um, her name, uh, she was, re she's really cool, Gina, she became one of my best friends for that time. We're, we're dear, I, I consider her, like, a dear friend in my heart. Pretty much everyone I met along the way that I'm no longer friends with now, I still care about but we're just not in each other's lives because had it worked out the first time it would have you know that would have been a boring story I guess so yeah um I was paired up with her and she was like yeah you bullied me pretty much like you kept telling people this thing about me it was a true thing but it was it was mean how I was doing it and so like I learned like oh I didn't even realize like I just thought I was funny like I didn't even realize I was mean and so like um, middle school, I kind of created an alter ego at school where um, I pretended that I didn't know anything and that I didn't know anything about math or anything. Anything that I was good at, I was like, suck that back, keep it in. And then like, but in band, like with a saxophone or a clarinet, I was so loud. I did not care. I just let myself express myself, kind of. But like that started getting more and more sucked away and drained and like more about like the teachers being like, okay, practice for the... For nationals! <laughs> we didn't go to nationals or whatever. But, like, they would just put me into these competitions and stuff. And I'm like, I don't freaking care about competitions. And so, um, even the part that I loved the most about myself, which was, which was my music, I learned to hate through the school system and through my mom, who had been forcing me to play just one song on the piano over and over and over again since I was little, um, pretty much. And that made me not only hate that song, but almost hate piano. But at the same time, I couldn't. And so there was this big pain that I would... If anyone's watched the anime Your Lie in April, it was like that. I would hit these keys, and I just could not hear the sound, pretty much. It was so terrible, and that went on. And that was a huge thing, all the way up until even now. Well, now I'm so much... So much healing has been done, but like... In 2017, 
I could not play the piano still. Like, if I played it, I would just hear thudding of the keys. And, like, if I heard songs, if anyone's watched the movie La La Land, that started tearing me apart. I would, like, freak out, and, like, my head would hurt, and I would have to, like, I went to the movies, and I didn't know La La Land was a musical, and the moment I got in there and realized it was, I, like, ran out and went to the bathroom, like, and broke down completely. Luckily, no one was in there, because, like, I was just, like, freaking out. <laughs> and, like, that's when I was like, oh, God, something is super, super wrong. Like, music is a traumatic experience for me, and it's not supposed to be. It's like this thing, it's too powerful, it's too much, pretty much. But, um, getting ahead of myself, as usual, back in middle school created that alter ego, and so, like, the whole next ten years of my life, middle school to, like, graduation, was just, like, learning how to get back to ex being not super anxious, like, I closed myself off from the world, from being super annoying in middle school, that came from, like, going to high school by freshman year, and I'll, like, talking obnoxiously to people, and then people like, yeah, I'm not actually listening, you're really annoying, and I'd be like, Oh, that, that's okay! And I would keep telling my story, and then it was around sophomore year, junior year, that I stopped being able to do that, and then became this person who couldn't say a thing in public, and I would just, you know, put my hoodies on, music, anything, or just, like, so much anxiety everywhere I went. And then it was junior year that I met my best friend, Aiden. He was basically, uh, you know, one of the soulmates in this world for me, and that just changed my life. He saved my life. It was around meeting him junior year that I chose to, like, smoke weed. I actually didn't choose to smoke weed. I was kind of forced slash kind of manipulated into it. But that's okay. Um, I'd say it's a really good thing that I did that because smoking weed really, like, brought me towards, like, having to look head on at what all my issues are with myself and what all my issues are with my health. Um, some of smoking weed actually triggered some of my health again. <laughs> But these are problems that existed while I was growing up and like I can see through my parents and I know I've known about and um, it's sort of a like while smoking isn't good for you like in terms of like inhaling and then like creating tar and in your lungs and all that stuff um, it triggered these things that would have come up much much later in life and I know that I would not have tried to get medical help this early on had I not made my medical problems this much worse on my own. <laughs> I wish they weren't here, but I'm grateful that I'm working on them. So, yeah. Um, high school comes around, I meet Aiden, he changes my life, and with someone who I can trust as much as him, I started falling apart more. I was like, this person I can trust, but like, you know, just like with Matthias, just with like, all the countless lists of people that I can name, but I just didn't deserve what I did to him, and neither did anyone else growing up, but I'll, I also didn't deserve the insecurities that I gained along the way from each friend, basically proving, yes, we will leave you, yes, you are disposable, yes, you are just worth, like, the person we cheat off in class, or worth, like, getting free lunch food, or, like, you know, someone who we can, like, rely on, like, for some emotional, like, support, mm -hmm. and then, like, go disappear and never, like, hang out, you know, stuff like that, and so, like, Aiden was kind of the first best friend that I came along, where it's, like, now I'm falling apart, you know, I think I described the Lala and thing, like, I would do that, but with the idea of friendship, and, like, the series One Piece saved my life, and, like, taught me, like, to really trust in your friends, and so, like, that would tear me apart, too, because it's, like, I'm supposed to listen to what One Piece lessons taught me, and I'm supposed to trust in my friend Aiden, like, how come I can't do this, like, why do I feel like once we graduate, he's gonna realize how crazy I am, and, like, tell me off, and it'll be that. And so I got through that on my own journey, and, like, talking to people, and it was actually this camping trip, um, at the end of 2016, <sighs> that taught me... <sighs> to trust, to to talk more and like open myself up and it was at the end of that camping trip that I messaged Aiden and I was like, here's the truth, I think you are going to betray me one day and he was like, no I'm not and I was like, ah, okay <laughs> and it just like suddenly like that issue just dissipated, it disappeared now I no longer have that fear with my best friend Aiden 
And then I realized 2016 became a huge grind. 2015 and 2016 was a huge insecurity grind with, like, my other friends, Jordan and Bowman and eventually Caitlin and just, like, people where I was like, these people are, what about them? Like, they might leave me someday. I was like, I was realizing, I was realizing like, oh, crap, just because I figured this out with Aiden, like, why is it still, like, it feels like this is never going to get easier making new friends. And it's true, it's always really hard to make new friends. But I have found now that I'm in 2018 that no, um, I'm getting better and better at these trust issues and like, it, it does get easier, but, well, uh, yeah, well, I forgot what I was talking about. I have a really short attention span with my memory. It's kind of like walking upstairs if the ones behind you fall. Yeah. Um, what was I talking about? Now I'm going to pause, I think. Oh, that it's that it actually does get easier. It's just a lot of meeting new friends and a lot of, like, it being hard. A lot of that has to do with those friends actually being actually kind of really bad friends and not there for me. Like, kind of the names I listed, like, they're great, but in a lot of ways they did break my trust in ways that I'm not going to defend them about anymore because once I finally confronted them, like, at first they were like, I don't see why this is a problem, but the more we would go, they'd be like, no, I know, I feel terrible, like, yes, I was lying, like, suddenly it was like, okay, I, I, like, finally get it now, like, I'm not wrong to feel this way. Anyways, I'm about to run out of storage, so, oh wait, I deleted a few more videos, I have more time. Let's see how much time I have. If it stops midway, I'll just make a second video. But, yeah, 2017, uh, at, I'll go back, 20, 2016 is the end of this camping trip, then 2017 happens, where after that camping trip, I learned, like, okay, I can't keep this stuff to myself anymore. So it was, like, January 1st or something, after I had New Year's, and it was New Year's at Mariella's house, and it was really fun. And, um, yeah, so January comes around, and I'm going to these grave shifts with Mariella. She works at Sherry's, and she has to work, like, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., and, like, I was just going there to help her. I would give her One Piece volumes, and she would read them to, like, get through the shift and to read a good story. And it was one of those days in January, I think, I feel like it was the first for some reason, just because it's like a big thing for some reason. But uh, I came out to her as gay, and I was like, yeah. And she's like, oh, that's fine. And I was like, yeah, but like, it's not, though. <laughs> and she was like, why? And I was like, and so I explained the more difficult things about that, and then it's like, really, like, not that simple. And like, okay, I don't actually really know. Like, maybe all these, like, girls, basically, that I had crushes on, like, like, growing up, I always just thought, oh, that must be me trying to, like, hide my being closeted gay like oh I must be doing that because I don't want to be gay and I want to be straight which a part was true I was like I was very much not wanting to be into men but then like you know my own journey just taught me like no I guess I'm bisexual or really it's rather just like while I'm very dominantly one side of something no one is just one thing I learned basically this was a 2017 lesson, but I learned through dating somebody that, like, sexuality is very much fluid and that, wow, this society really fucked with a lot of our brains, and that is not okay. And I already kind of understood what they did with gender roles, like, growing up, and we were actually kind of raised to be pretty gender neutral in this house, me and, like, my five siblings or whatever. So, that's my take on sexuality, and, uh... I was so closed-minded about it. I was so afraid about it because I hadn't talked to anyone and I hadn't found anyone to be in a relationship with that I could be because I always felt guilty whenever I got into a relationship with a girl. It was never a real relationship because I would want to break up in like a few days because I felt so guilty. I was like, well,